Norman, why have you made uh, for this call, made this call to to investigate Prince Andrew's money? Surely that that that's a private matter. I don't think it's a private matter where public funds are used, and this is the issue I think the public are worried about. Uh, Prince Andrew himself in a terrible mess, as we know, but there's no way the taxpayer should bail him out. The suggestion that's been brought forward is that the, the money might be found, some of it anyway, from the Duchy of Lancaster resources, which are available to the Queen. Uh, that money, uh, it could be argued, is actually public money. But in any case, what we know from the Duchy of Lancaster's um, uh, accounts is that uh, the Queen uses uh, that money to provide uh, funds for her offspring. And, uh, and we believe that um, that money is then used to offset against the tax paid from the Duchy's accounts. In other words, there'll be an indirect subsidy to uh, the, uh, from, the, from the accounts with, uh, to help pay Andrew's legal money and what he has to pay to uh, Virginia Giuffre. Uh, that would be clearly unacceptable if money is used uh, to, um, from the public purse to pay for that particular episode. Absolutely. But if the Queen is paying it privately as such, I mean, is, is it possible for the Queen to pay something privately? And if she is, then surely it's her business. Well, there's a whole range of issues to be looked into on a much wider basis um, about the royal fans, finances generally. I mean, we have got a, a, a curious mixture whereby uh, what benefits the royal family in one way is regarded as, uh, as public. And then when it comes to paying money, uh, it's sometimes called private. Um, they, 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 they play these public-private uh, relationships to their advantage in taxation terms. Remember that, the, that it was only in 1993 that the Queen actually started paying income tax and does so voluntarily. She was excused from uh, paying any tax on dividend income for 40 years, which the Daily Mail estimated gave her a windfall of close to a, a billion pounds. Um, even now, there is no inheritance tax paid, unlike everybody else in the country. Uh, the Queen Mother paid no inheritance tax, was not, was not liable for any inheritance tax when she died. And so there are all sorts of uh, tax dodges. And really, the time to upgrade and, and modernise the tax arrangements of the royal family are, are there. I'm not suggesting it should be treated in any way uh, disadvantageously compared to the rest of the population. But equally, the advantages they have, which uh, are born out of history and have no proper purpose in this day and age, should be eradicated. So there's a much wider case for public accounts which is to look into royal finances generally. Margaret Hodge tried to do some of that when she was chair, but nothing much had been done since 2013. And let's just remember that um, in 2011, the civil list which the royal family got was worth 7.9 million. Uh, last year, the sovereign grant was 85.9 million, a gigantic increase in just 10 years. Do you think that the disgrace that's befallen Prince Andrew has increased the public appetite to know about these things? Because obviously, as you've pointed out, they've kind of been left in the same old situation for, you know, tens and hundreds of years. Well, I, I think the public would be outraged if they knew how much money was going towards the royal family. And that's one of the reasons I believe the royal family is very keen to keep their will secret. You know, nobody else can keep their wills secret. You can't, Mariella, I can't. But the royal family keeps their wills secret. And the reason they do so, in my view, is because the public would be horrified if they understood how much money had been accumulated from the public purse um, and, and gone to private wealth. So there's just need looking at. And, but it's not top of the, the public agenda because they don't know about it. And I think the royal family is very keen. They don't know about it. My view is that notwithstanding Jeffrey Epstein and everything else that's gone on recently, the real scandal involved in the royal family relates around money. And, and when that starts coming out, that's when the real problems will arise. So Charles said he wants to modernise the monarchy. Um, he's right to say that. And he, has to, he needs to do so in financial terms, not just in superficial terms. It's not just about how many people are on the balcony at Buckingham Palace. Mm. I, I mean, you, you mentioned Prince Charles there. And of course, meanwhile, alongside what's happening with Prince Andrew, Scotland Yard have launched an investigation into claims that a Saudi billionaire who donated £1.5 million pounds, um, to one of the Prince of Wales charities received uh, a CBE. The, the Prince of Wales has said he's happy to help police. It's another blow to the royal reputation, isn't it? And also raises the spectre again of, of you, know, you know, money that we don't really understand the provenance of. Well, the Royal Family doesn't have to declare money it receives in the way that MPs do or the members of the House of Lords do, or even local councillors do. Uh, when they receive gifts, they can call them private gifts and we know no more about them. But we know, for example, that um, 
these things pop out suddenly. We know that uh, a convicted gun runner gave, gave uh, Prince Andrew an £18,000 uh, diamond necklace for his daughter. There's no proper record of these things. They just, they just appear if we happen to know about them. So, you know, Prince Charles has got to come clean, I think, on this matter to do with uh, the Metropolitan Police investigation, which I asked for in a letter back in September. Uh, you know, he's, he's going to pretend he does nothing about it. And the police need to investigate that properly and find out whether that's the case or not. But we do know that Prince has form on this matter. We know going back 20 years that he's been prepared to associate with characters of dubious reputation if they're prepared to give to his good causes. Uh, we had uh, Kenneth Lay, the chief executive of Enron, who um, contributed to Prince Charles's good causes. And in return, he got some credibility from association with the prince, which staved off Enron's bankruptcy. We know there was a Turkish businessman in 2003 who paid £200,000 for his wife to sit next to Prince Charles at a dinner and then duly used the photographs of that and spread them around the world to give him some credibility before he too was a, a subject of interest in the law. So I'm afraid this has got a history and I don't think it's, it's difficult for Prince Charles to argue he knows nothing about this when uh, this has been standard practice for many, for many years. Norman, we do seem to have a tradition of this in this country, though, don't we? Because we've been talking a lot recently, obviously, with what's happening on the uh, Ukraine-Russia border about yeah. Russian money in the UK and the way it flows into political yeah. parties, but also into, you know, national life. Do you think that the whole issue of, of you know, scrutiny of, 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 you know, our financial institutions and, and what we allow and don't allow is, is, you know, definitely up for grabs now and long overdue? It is long overdue, and you started, Marilyn, by talking about uh, the access to information. And this is absolutely crucial. What we need in this country is we need a proper application of freedom of information. We haven't got that yet. And the royal family, by the way, has largely exempted itself from, from scrutiny in that way uh, through legal changes. Uh, and we need a proper, diverse, uh, active press, which we have in some to some degree in this country, but not enough, in my view. And if we have openness and accountability, then a lot of these things will go away because people behave badly if they think we'll be found out. Just think of MPs' expenses. The reason MPs uh, abused their expenses is not because they were more uh, gratuitously greedy than anybody else in the population, it's because they thought they could get away with it. Uh, and I'm afraid the same thing applies to the royal family now. So, and, and the Russian businessmen who don't have accountability for the money they're spending in London and buying up houses. Uh, you know, we don't know who these people are. So more accountability, more transparency, a vibrant media. These are the answers to the problems we got in this country. Norman Baker, the journalist and former Liberal Democrat politician, thank you very much for joining me. You're listening to Mariella Frostrup here. On